On paper, having an infinite Threadling build sounds insane. Threadlings offer really good ad clear and some decent additional damage without you really needing to do anything, so having an endless amount of these would be great. And with Weave Walk, our base abilities and some mods, you really can have infinite Threadlings with very little cooldown, but there are definitely some positives and negatives to running the build. In this video, I wanted to go over what I think is the best overall infinite threadling setup, which gives you access to 23 threadlings that can be spawned on demand, where 13 of these can be spawned in just a second or two, and then cover the positives and negatives to the build, along with what I think personally could make the build much better with just a few changes. With the new Weave Walk ability, we're able to convert one of our melee charges into five threadlings, and since we have three melee charges, we're able to get 15 threadlings in total. Our Rift gives another 3, and then so does our Threadling Grenade. And then lastly, anytime we destroy a Tangle, two more Threadlings will spawn in. So in total, that's where we're getting the 23 Threadlings. And then with just one set of Weavewalk Threadlings, which is 5, casting our Rift and Grenade, and then a Tangle, that's how we can pretty much instantly cast 13 Threadlings. Not to mention, each Threadling unravels enemies that it does damage to, so we have a ton of unraveling rounds going around dealing additional damage. And then orbs we create, along with dealing damage with Tangles, easily cycles all three of our main abilities. I think the build offers a ton, but also has some drawbacks, which I will be covering a bit later in the video, so make sure to stick around for that. But for now, I'm going to start by going over the full build. Before I do, if you guys haven't already, make sure to drop a quick like and sub down below. It helps me out a ton, and it's completely free. For our exotic of choice with the build, we are obviously running Swarmers. These are boots that you can throw on for Warlock. These are right now one of the only, if not the only, Strand exotic in the entire game. I really wish we did have some more Strand options to work from. These aren't terrible, but they're not the best. I feel like we could get even better exotics, especially for infinite Threadling builds. With these equipped, anytime we destroy a Tangle, that is going to be spawning in two Threadlings. It says a Threadling, but it should be two Threadlings each time. And then more importantly, our Threadlings, even if they're spawned from our Rift, our Grenade, any ability, are going to be unraveling targets that they damage. When they unravel, that's going to be sending out like those Nanite rounds. They deal additional damage, which is great for the build since we're constantly using Threadlings to add clear. And then after that, because those enemies are affected by those unraveling rounds, they also can die, and if our Tangle spawn is on cooldown, they will then spawn an additional Tangle, so we can keep easily chaining this and pretty much spawning in Tangles as soon as they're off cooldown, which is really good for the build. As far as the Strand subclass goes, obviously our only option for our super is going to be Needle Storm. Overall, the build with all the Threadlings is really good for ad clear, but anything that is tankier takes a lot more effort to bring down, especially if it's a champion or a mini boss. So having Needle Storm for that really high burst damage for those tankier enemies is extremely nice. As far as Strand goes, it tends to lack healing options. It has really good damage resistance sources through Woven Mail, obviously, but then our healing lacks for actually getting that health back. So Healing Rift is great for that reason. Also, when it comes to Empowering Rift, I don't really think Empowering Rift is anywhere near the meta. If you need a buff, you're going to be inside of a Well of Radiance. Plus, this is an ad clear build, so we might as well go with that healing. We don't actually really want to take this into DPS encounters going up against bosses. Arcane Needle is great. This is going to directly work with Weave Walk. We're going to be getting three copies of this melee, and then anytime we use Weave Walk to actually spawn in Threadlings, which I'll be going over in a second here, it's going to consume our melee energy. So having three copies is really good because this gives us up to 15 Threadlings that we can spawn in when we need. And then lastly, because it's an infinite Threadling build, we do have Threadling Grenade. Throwing this down is going to spawn in three Threadlings, and it will also generate things like Orbs of Power for us to use with the build. When it comes to our aspects, Weave Walk is up first. You are going to notice this only gives one Fragment slot. I think that kind of sucks for the build. I really wish this gave two. I would even argue you could get three Fragment slots with this aspect, and it wouldn't even be that broken. So I'm really hoping that this gets changed eventually. But with this, it directly ties in with our melee ability. So we can jump in the air and activate our dodge to slowly deplete our melee charges to then in turn generate Threadlings. For one melee charge, it's going to give us five Threadlings. So basically every 20% of your melee that is drained, you're generating a Threadling. And you're also in kind of an untargetable high damage resistance state. So it's pretty hard to die here. You basically go immune and untargetable, spawn in these Threadlings, and then can come out and use those Threadlings whenever you need. 
And then lastly, we are also running Weaver's Call with the build. With this, anytime we place our Rift down, that is going to automatically send out three Threadlings. But more important than this, when we cast a Rift, any Threadlings that are perched, which can be up to five perched Threadlings, are going to instantly be sent out to then target enemies. The only other way to get your Threadlings to actually attack and deal damage to an enemy is to actually deal damage with weapons. So this is really nice because if we store up five Threadlings and want to use them really quickly, rather than like one at a time and send them out by dealing weapon damage, we can easily activate our Rift and go from like five Threadlings now to eight and have those instantly be cast out because we have the five purse Threadlings and then we also get three more from our Rift. And if we wanted to, we could also throw a grenade and get up to 11 really quickly just like that. Lastly, when it comes to our fragments, because we only have three slots, I did go with Thread of Evolution. Our Threadlings are going to deal additional damage. This should be either 30 or 33% additional Threadling damage, and they obviously travel further. Obviously, it's a Threadling build, so we want that increased damage and distance traveled, plus that does tie in with Needlestorm, so our Super also gets increased damage out of that as well. Thread of Warding is really good for any end game level activity. Picking up an Overpower gives us Woven Mail for 10 seconds, and Woven Mail is a 55% damage resistance so all our incoming damage is basically cut in half which is fantastic that said if you take this into a very low level casual activity you're not really going to need threat of wording and your build and ability cycle and rotation is going to feel much better in my opinion if you run threat of generation threat of generation just really isn't needed if you actually need to stay alive so you can use this in low end activities otherwise if you're in end game content i do recommend sticking with threat of wording and then finally, we do have Thread of Warding. I actually use this in my Titan Banner of War build. This is really good for getting your melee charges back very quickly. In that build, you want your melee charges so you can do high damage. In this, we want extra melee charges and increased energy gains so that we can spawn more Threadlings with Weave Walk. With Thread of Fury, all we need to do is get a Tangle and then either shoot it and destroy it or throw it at an enemy. And as long as we hit an enemy with it and we deal damage, we're getting melee energy back. And it tends to be a lot of energy, upwards of like 50% of a full melee charge to end the video off obviously i wanted to go over all the mods we're using with the build you guys can pause the video screenshot it apply it in game yourself or as always there will be a mobile lytics link and a dim link so that you guys can easily check out more info and apply the build yourself in a single click on my helmet i do have a void strand dual siphon for most of the gameplay i was using something like quicksilver storm which is strand and then in some cases i was just using like a void weapon i would just default to a dual siphon for whatever two weapons you're using which will typically be strand and then whatever else and then after that i do have one heavy ammo finder on because a lot of these other mods tend to not synergize well with the build Surprisingly, some mods will work with Threadling Grenades, even though Threadlings are registering as the kill. So Firepower will still work. As you throw down a Threadling Grenade, this will generate an Orb of Power when you get a kill. And then likewise, Momentum Transfer and Bolstering Detonation make it so that anytime our grenade is dealing damage, once again, it works with Threadling Grenades. This will give us class ability energy and then melee energy directly back. As always, for endgame content, I have three copies of damage resistance source mods on my chest piece. Obviously, with the endgame content that you're in, you can just cycle based on the damage that you're taking. And if you're in low end content, you can use some of these other mods, especially stuff like charged up. But at least for this build, it's not really worth it. Our exotic for the build is obviously going to be swarmers. So make sure you're running these for your exotic leg armor. And then I like to run invigoration, recuperation, and then innervation. Innervation and Invigoration are going to give us 10% of our melee and our grenade back each and every time we pick up an Orb of Power. And then Recuperation is the second and only other healing source that we have with this build. When we pick up those orbs, we're also getting 70 HP straight back. And then lastly, on my class item, I do have one copy of Outreach and one copy of Bomber. With these, anytime I place down my class ability, which will be my Rift, I'm getting 20% of my grenade back and 20% of my melee charge back. And then also our next weapon final blow after placing our Rift down with the Mod Reaper will also generate an Orb of Power for us to collect, get health back, and then also additional melee and grenade energy, once again, through these leg mods. When it comes to the pros and cons to the build, I think the pros are pretty clear. Infinite Threadlings means an endless supply of AI ad clear that we don't really need to worry about. It means more supplemental damage to tank your enemies like bosses and champions, and then also the ability to ad clear larger groups at once, since the Threadlings are able to focus multiple things at once, where we're typically just shooting one enemy at a time. For the cons, I feel like this list is a bit more extensive. At least with Weave Walk, this can take a ton of time to spawn in the five Threadlings, which is good when you need that damage resistance to stay alive, but really bad if you'd rather just be shooting the enemies instead of standing around. 
jumping to activate the ability is also another tiny annoyance. And overall, even in the case where the DR is nice to have, you spawn five Threadlings too quickly to ever recover a significant portion of your health. The other major downside is the fact that Threadlings stay perched far too long. The infinite Threadling build would be much better if they stayed perched so you didn't waste them, but then just went after enemies on their own. As it stands, you need to shoot an enemy to send these Threadlings out, and in a lot of cases, you need to shoot a lot for all the Threadlings to become unperched. Overall, if I had to summarize it, I think an infinite Threadling build would feel much better if generating the Threadlings was more passive and if they seeked targets on their own. Let me know your thoughts on the build and infinite threadling setups in the comments down below and if you guys agree with the pros and cons to the build or disagree. I do also stream almost every night over on my Twitch. We're currently running Garden of Salvation speedruns over there. A link to my Twitch will be down in the description below if you guys ever want to drop by. As always, have a good one guys. Peace.